and welcome back to my channel! Ah! I've been tackling all the videos that you guys have been demanding for the past few months or so and another super, super highly requested video has been how to design your own covers for your mangas and comics. Yeah, we're gonna do that today. And for those of you who do not know who I am, hello guys! My name is Lizbeth, I am a published American mangaka, which means that I make manga for a living. I am published in America and you can find my manga in stores in the manga section. So please check out my website, sacredthemanga.com, where you can sample chapters of my manga, Sacred, for free. And if you liked it and wanted to support it, I really hope you'll check out my shop as well where you can get 10% off while using this coupon code. You can also find it on Amazon and in stores. We ship worldwide, however, the coupon code can only be used on my site. My story has lots and lots of comedy in it, but if you really enjoy the occult, folklore, and mythology as much as I do, I think you'd really appreciate the dark elements of my story as well, so please check it out. So back to the video. So we're going to be talking about how to decide what your cover will look like, how to lay it out, and all that other good stuff. So please stick around to the very end, guys, okay? I have lots of useful information, and hopefully you can make use of this video. And if you like it and really enjoyed this video or found it useful, please guys do not forget to give it a big thumbs up to show your support and let me know that you enjoyed this video and want to see more videos like this one. And don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss out on any more useful tutorials on drawing, making manga and comics and getting published as well as fun skits about my life as a published author because some weird stuff be happening on the road while we go to author events and all that good stuff. So you don't want to miss out on those videos, I assure you. And <laughs> believe me, you don't want to miss them. So without further ado, let's get started. The very first thing that you need to do in order to design your covers is understanding your story. I know they say don't judge a book by its cover, but the people who design the covers for mangas, comics, and novels are expecting you to judge the book by its cover. They want you to look at the cover and be like, huh, this story is about this or it's going to make me feel like that. When you design your covers, you really need to think about what your story is about, what the mood of your story is, and how you want people to feel when they look at the cover. You want them to have a good idea about what your story is about and the mood of the story just by looking at the cover. Examine the covers of your favorite manga, comics, and novels and really pay attention to the overall layout of the covers. Look at the colors, look at the artwork, look at even the font that they use. All these things really communicate what the story is all about. And if you're younger, this might be a little bit harder for you to do simply because you may still be developing your story and your storytelling style. So if you design your cover now, I assure you it's going to change every few months to a year because your style is going to continue to mature and develop. But that's completely okay. Get practicing now. Practice now. The more you practice, the better. So that when you're actually old enough and ready to publish your work, you'll have more experience and you'll be able to design your covers better. But honestly, if you go to a publisher anyway, they're going to help you design it, if not design it for you. But it's still really good to have this understanding because you might choose to self-publish in the future or you might be with a publisher that actually gives you enough control that you can actually help them design the covers. Now, I want to show you a little example of what I'm talking about. Here is a copy of my own published manga series. There's a lot of black, the artwork is a little morbid, there are corpse hands, and the font that I trademarked, this is my logo that I trademarked, um, all of this contributes to the overall mood. You understand that this series can have a dark element to it, and the back cover, even the artwork on the back, and the colors, and so on and so forth, all of it contributes to the overall mood. When you pick it up, you have a pretty good idea of what the story is going to feel like. And then when you open it up, you get that really nice surprise that there's also comedy in here. 
but when you read the series, there's no doubt that the cover was a pretty good representation of the darker element of the story, and the darker elements is what I wanted to emphasize on the cover. Now, compare my cover to the cover of one of my favorite manga series, Oran Hose Club. When you look at it, there are bright colors, even how the artwork is in a little square, the pastel colors, the back cover, unlike my dark back cover, their back cover is completely white, very bright, very friendly, refreshing, and very inviting. So this you automatically know it's for younger people, probably for girls, and more than likely has to do with romance based off of this picture. You kind of understand that, and even because of the art style, you get a pretty good idea that it might actually have some comedy to it, but definitely romance, lightheartedness, very well communicated through this cover. So to recap, when you are designing your covers, definitely think about what your story is about, what the mood is, and you want to reflect that on your covers. Now that you understand what mood you want to communicate through your covers, you're probably thinking, how do I do that? What colors do I choose? <laughs> Help me. What colors do I choose? What font do I use? How do I know what to do? Don't worry, I'm going to do my best to help you out. Now I have to warn you, when it comes to designing covers, just like everything else in art, it takes a lot of trial and a lot of error. And usually there's a lot more error than anything else. You're going to be trying out different fonts until you finally find one that really fits your story. Sometimes you'll have to do what I did and just completely design a brand new font. It does take time, so be patient with yourself. I think a good place to start is what colors you would like for your cover overall. Think about what colors actually communicate the mood that you want for your cover. Once you've figured that out, I think once again it's a good idea to go refer to the covers of some of your favorite mangas, comics, and novels and really see what colors they used, how they laid out the covers. A lot of times you'll see in manga they'll just have one character just standing there against a white background and that works really really well. But again, you have to look at the pose. Sometimes it's a really strong stance, sometimes it's a very noble stance where they're just kind of looking at you like... Something like that, you know what I mean? Other times each cover has like a color theme. Composition and layout and color theory these are all very abstract ideas, but definitely, just like with your artwork, when you put something somewhere and you're like, it doesn't feel right, I think I want to move it over because it doesn't feel right, that's all composition. Your eyes are trying to figure out how to make the composition more aesthetically pleasing or more beautiful. And I think the same thing goes for designing a cover. You want to look at the aesthetics of the cover, make it very welcoming, very beautiful, very grungy, whatever the feel and look you want for the cover is. And I think the problem with teaching people how to design a cover on their own is you don't know what their story is about and everyone's story and everyone's artwork and everyone's storytelling style is completely different than the last person. Even if it's a little similar, there's still very apparent differences. So no two people are going to be able to design their covers exactly the same. Everyone's so different that really it's up to you to find out what composition works best for your story, what layout works best for your story, play around with it, keep experimenting with it, ask people's opinions, show it to your art teacher, show it to your friends, anyone who's read your story, show them the cover and be like, does this suit my story? Does this suit the mood? Really look at it and examine it. Don't worry if you don't fall in love with it 100%, that's okay. Over time, your artwork and your storytelling style will completely improve and over time you can just keep tweaking it and when you're finally ready to share your work with the world, you will be able to create a cover that completely embodies your story and you won't and you'll feel full confidence in it. Don't try to lie to them and lure them in with lies on your cover. You want them to look at the cover and have a very good idea as to what they're going to get on the inside of the book. You know what I mean? I really hope that this little one-on-one -on -one talk we just had right here, you and me, 
I hope it was super useful and will help you on your artistic journey. So don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Please check out my website, sacredthemanga.com. Guys, it's going to be a really cool experience actually creating a cover for your story. So I hope you'll enjoy every step of the way. Until next time, guys, please take care. God bless and do not be afraid to nerd out.